So this month I turned 27. 27 years old. And that's got me feeling a bit reflective. So I always think about my personality and I'd like to think I'm quite a self-reflective person. And I think like the most overwhelming characteristic that I would say had affected me in the past with my characteristics was my like erraticness slash indecisiveness, right? And I think like the two go hand in hand. And I was kind of reflecting on the fact that to an extent, I've really reduced the amount of that erraticness and indecisiveness. So to give you guys some context, I answered a question in my recent Q&A about confidence and I spoke about how some people who perhaps are perceived as confident, perhaps because they're confident people, they actually can go through emotions in their extremes, right? Like someone who's like really confident and outward maybe can equally be someone who when they're like sad or depressed, they're like really sad and depressed. Now I have no science to back this. This is purely bro science, but I'm assuming it's my channel and I was saying that I, you know, have confidence confidence in some spaces but I've noticed that that high spike of confidence that I have that same emotion can be a massive disadvantage and lead to like spikes right and so as I've grown older I've been able to balance that out and one of the things that also came from it was indecisiveness and uh, to give context to that the indecisiveness I experienced like anyone in my family would tell you could be quite disrupting and it's me being indecisive on decisions that one should not be indecisive of. And the example I always give because it comes to mind is like when we went to Nando's once and I went to the till and then I ordered my food and I was like, can I get half chicken, medium with peri fries? And then like they put the order in and I'm like, no, actually I'll go for spicy rice. And then I put the spicy rice in and then I'm like, no, actually I'll go for peri fries. And then they put the peri fries in and I'll be like, yeah, actually I'll go for spicy rice. You can see where I'm going with this. And that's such a silly thing to cause so much havoc over. And you might think what is erratic, this like erratic thing got to do with also the indecisiveness, but I'm categorizing them as one, because again, it's my channel. And uh, that's what I've decided. So in this video, reflecting on the fact that I'm 27 now, <laughs> I thought I'll talk about how I was able, some of the steps I've been able to take to really reduce that and live a life where I'm a lot more mellow and hopefully in the middle with like, just like dealing with things, having maybe a bit more patience and, um, and, 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 just and, okay? So it goes without saying that the obvious ones and the obvious things that I think really help and I'm going to categorise this all in one now just so I can then move on to giving five steps and the obvious ones are like praying istikhara before decisions makes things so much easier and practising the religion in general makes things so much easier because when you're practising the religion you realise that there's a lot of things and decisions that are made for you. You also have like a yardstick to measure your morality and reasoning so for example if I'm trying to make a decision now on whether I should buy my camera on finance to spread the payments or buy outright now my decision is made so much easier because if the finance has interest payments interest is not permissible decision made so that kind of goes without saying but these five steps I'm about to mention are other practical steps that I've picked up along the way that I hope will benefit you guys in making yourselves better people and if you're not a person who struggles with this Pass it on to someone who is. Okay, first things first, with the indecisiveness, I had a conversation with my older brother Omar and there was one thing that he said to me that just was profound and it sounds so simple, but I remember speaking to him once and saying, how do you live with decisions knowing that you could have gone with the other decision? And by the way, I have never really struggled to make decisions on big things. It's the small things I've struggled to make decisions on, like spicy rice, peri chips. How can you trust me with that decision? Sorry. So he said, bro, he goes, do you think that I don't feel indecisive about decisions? But what I do is once I've made the decision, I just tell myself that I have to live with it. And what's the worst case scenario? You eat spicy rice, it didn't go well with the chicken. And you think, all right, next time I'll go for peri fries. That's it. Nothing crazy has happened. And when I had that conversation with him, for some reason, it, it really benefited me. As simple as a concept as it is, it just made me realize that it's going to be okay if I make a decision that I'm not happy with. Because like I said, I only seem to be indecisive with really small decisions. And they're never decisions that are really going to affect my life or health in a way that like is going to prolong it. Uh, well, I would want something to prolong my life. I mean, like it's not going to prolong the problem. So tip one is when you're struggling to make micro decisions, just make a decision and tell yourself whatever this result of this decision is, I'm going to have to live with it and I'm going to deal with it and that's fine. And then if it was ended up being the wrong decision, I won't make that decision next time. And that really helped, especially with those micro decisions. Number two, with the erraticness of like one thing that helped a massive advantage I found is gaining stability in other areas of your life. And so when you hasten to get married, to have kids and stuff, 
stuff like that, all of a sudden you take on more responsibility. And when you take on more responsibility, so now I'm responsible for my family, I'm responsible for my children, that gives you stability in those areas. And that responsibility that you've got is such a big responsibility that it now adds weight to those erratic decisions. So now if I just like decide to, what's the kind of erratic decision I would make? I don't know, quit my job and start something fresh or buy something that's like, I might regret because it's really expensive. Those kind of scenarios. When you add stability in other areas of your life, you now have children that you're responsible for and stuff like that. Those decisions become a lot easier because you can physically see the effect that it's gonna have on, for example, your kids or your family. So point number two is add some stability in whatever way you can around your life. And well, and that's it. Number three is have a role model and make sure you don't have too many role models because it can get difficult because everyone's personality is different and people have different opinions, right? But having like a role model that you see as someone who is at where you want to be in that particular field is really, really empowering. And so what I would recommend is have different role models in different fields. So for example, in an Islamic perspective, you might have a role model like your teacher and like you want to be where that person is in terms of like your memorization of Quran. And then perhaps from a business perspective, you have someone. And so for many things, I take my older brother as a role model and many other things I take my teachers as a role model. And then I take friends as role models and stuff like that, but have role models that are kind of like attainable slash you see them a lot. So people who are kind of in your life and around your life that you can kind of like measure yourself against. Number four is don't ask too many people for their opinions. Asking people for their opinions can be so poisonous. People, when they give their opinions, they come into you with their lived experiences or like where they're at right now. They're not gonna be at where you're at in your life right now. It's impossible. And so they can't think like how you think. So it is important to get opinions and advice sometimes and stuff like istikhara and istishara it's so important but if you ask too many people for opinions we all know about the saying of too many chefs in the kitchen it's gonna spoil the i don't know the end of that i don't know the end of that saying it's gonna spoil the broth it's gonna spoil the broth and just to add a bonus point on top of that last point, which was don't ask too many people questions. One thing I found that massively helped me was this dua. It's just so amazing. I'll put it up on the screen now. The end of that dua is powerful because it's asking for Allah for protection from all of these things, anxiety and stuff. And then the end is from the overpowering of men, like almost feeling like what are people going to say? Do you know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? And now it's time for the final point. Point number five is gain self-confidence. This is one that really did great things for me and inshallah continues to do great things for me because while as I mentioned I have confidence in, in some aspects of life I think that I do lack self-confidence in some other aspects and I'm not upset about that because I spoke to Kareem about that recently as well and Kareem said it's great that you have like this realistic vision like it, it would feel rough if I felt like I was trying to portray like a fake version of me for you guys for podcasts and that kind of stuff so I feel like I can accept stuff like I'm not the best podcaster I, I talk very fast I take so long to make a point I take so long to ask a question when I accept these things about me it satisfies me because it's just the truth at the same time there is an element where you should have self-confidence like you should be proud and understanding of what your spikes are in your personality in your intellect and so on and so forth what your advantages are I remember one key point in my high school years and that was when our maths teacher had quit and therefore we had a temporary sub maths teacher. And this maths teacher was a temp, he was a, what do they call it? A, uh, a supply teacher. And he was, I'll be honest, he was bullied by the students quite a bit, but hopefully, and as far as I remember, not by me. I liked that teacher, although I can't remember his name. And the point of that is, there's a story here. When, when this teacher eventually ended up leaving, probably due to the fact that he was being so disrespected by students. I remember it was his last day and he'd been teaching us for maybe a few weeks or months. And I was just finishing something up in my maths class. It was the end of the day. And so I ended up being like the last student in the class. And as I was finishing up, this teacher came up to me and he said something that stuck with me for the rest of my life. He said, Faisal, in class, you always put your hand up and ask questions or you ask for reassurance. or you ask if your answer is correct. And whenever you ask, your answer is always correct. You need to believe in yourself because you keep asking for other people's approval, my approval. But every time you ask and I check your work, the work's correct. And for some reason, man, that just stuck with me. And that was probably a good 15, 16, 17 years ago because yes, I am 27 now. Yeah, that impacted me a lot. And I think I'm still on that journey of gaining self-confidence in that way. But respect to that teacher because he, in some ways, I think about that conversation often and he benefited me greatly by saying that, that I need to have some more self-confidence. And when you gain self-confidence, you realize that you are best 
equipped to make decisions about yourself. You are the central part of yourself. And as long as you use those other things, like praying istikhara, like basing your decisions morally and stuff like that, after that, you are the best person to make those decisions. And it takes some self-confidence to make those decisions. Now, there we have it. My five points of how to battle your indecisiveness, maybe slash erraticness, I don't know, but I hope that helps. If anybody feels like that, you're welcome. And if you feel like I've helped you, you're welcome. You're welcome. And I will see you inshallah on the next video. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.